Okay. Well, Trollope, Trollope Tower is really, really famous. You can Google it to start with to visualise it. It's a 30-storey building uh, with residents, the only one of the kind at the moment. Um, and the balcony is all faced south facing, I think, to let the sun in most of the day. And all the bedrooms look over the canal. Um, there's a lovely big roof up there, but no one is allowed to go up there. But I managed it one day, so I was quite happy about that. I'd done a, a dive, what do you call them things? I abseiled down it, so I was having a quick look while I was up there. <laughs> tell me about that then, tell me, tell me oh. why, why you were doing that and, and what that was like. Well, we were, oh, my friend said, oh, Sue, they're going to abseil down Trellick, let's put our names down. So we said, yeah, yeah, anyway, apparently when he, he was filling in the form online, it said they wanted deposit and everything from us and we'd have to go to the doctors to get a medical certificate and then we just frizzled out, oh, I can't be asked for all that. And um, then I woke up one day and I could hear loads of girls screaming and I, I'm on the other side and this side um, here, millions of girls were downstairs and I think it was diversity, the five boys. So I come down to look and they were being interviewed and they were going to start it off. So, and then I heard someone else saying, oh, they've still got spaces down there. So I thought, oh, wow, well, I'm going to go down. So I just went to lower ground and I said, oh, can I do it? And they just said, yeah. And they didn't ask for a doctor's letter or anything. So I thought, oops. I says, but I'm not walking up 30 stories because you had to do that as well as come down. I says, I'll get in the lift. <laughs> I think they were so glad. <laughs> um, and then up top, oh, my gosh, it was really, really high. And I thought, oh, God, anyway, I, I come over and I can't reach to put my legs on the side of the wall because you have to lean really back and put your legs on the wall. I'm thinking, I can't reach the wall. I'm saying, will I die? He's going, no, no, go down, go down. So then I thought, oh, God, I start going slowly, slowly. And everyone was just jumping big steps. And I thought, oh, no. And I thought, oh, my God, I've got to hold my weight. I never knew things like that. You have to hold your own weight. And, I thought, and then I forgot which, <laughs> which hand I had to do. Is it this one? Do I let go there? Will I fall? Or this one? I was coming down. And I could hear a lot of my friends screaming. I thought, oh, God. And I'm looking where I far down. And then I could see that one of the soldiers was coming down. And I thought, oh, we may be stopped by me. I'm going, help, help. <laughs> and he just went whizzing past. <laughs> So anyway, I managed to get down and lie on the floor for 10 minutes. Um, yeah, and I went upstairs and had a headache for four hours. <laughs> and that was my excitement for the day. But we did raise money. Yeah, I got money. Are you quite a thrill seeker? I was then. It all depends what it is. I'm impulsive. Yeah. I mean, I, I, when my son went to Thailand about... I think seven, eight years ago, and he came back and he was in with the lion, he was in with the lions and everything on the, on the elephants and all that. I said, "Oh, I won't mind that." So we went back and he took me everywhere he went, and there was a big enclosure where the lions were out of their cages. So we went in there, pictures with the lions, me lying over a lion. I must have been on Thailand Air or something, and. Um, and then it started thundering and lightning. I thought, oh, my God, they're going to jump up and go mad. But they didn't, so we had some nice photos in there with these and played with the little ones in a separate bit. Yeah, went on the elephants through the jungle. I had a really good, good time there. You know, I really want to go India now. So what, um, just back to the view, back to Abseil and Abseil, yeah. um, can you describe the view up there? What's it like? Oh, it's massive. It, how does it make you feel? Oh, as so I like, you're, you're really on top of everywhere. It's a mass, mass, ev sorry, everywhere you go. So, so I'll just, if we start that bit again, just because we obviously it'll pick up. Okay, there. Cool, so yeah, just... Yeah, it's like being on... What's it, what's it like? It's like, um, 
it's like the top of the world up there. Yeah, and uh, looking all the way around, it's like, wow, everything, you can see exactly everything you wanted. But I didn't get too long up there, they were shoving me down the side. But my son took a couple of pictures, really nice. But yeah, it, it's, it's, um, and it's a great building to live in. Yeah. So let's talk more about that then. What's, um, well, when did you, uh, when did you first move to Trevi? When, what happened? How long I, have you lived here? I've lived here 44 years. I moved in when it opened, 1972. Um, I come for the interview and into one of the flats and, uh, the porter said, oh, when I went to pick up my kids, he went, oh, where's your mum? So I said, no, it's me, what? So he said, I said, no, it's me, I'm getting the flat. So anyway, give me the keys, and I went up with my daughter, and it was like, wow, well, you know, something you'd never seen before. It was really like out of this world, flats like that. You know, and, oh, quick race down, yes, I'll take that, I'll take that. It was really good. Yeah, you know, all nice, clean, new. Because when we come to see this, we got off at Westbourne Park Station and you couldn't come left. You had to go right round the back of the houses. So um, by the time you turned round this corner and you looked up, it was like, wow. And so you're in Dubai looking at the first great big tower, you know. And wow, look at that. And it was nice weather, so it made it ten times better. And uh, it was just really, 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 everyone wanted to move in. And I think they still do. There's so many people that still want to move in here. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you a bit about that and about why Trellick is still a successful community. Yeah. But can you tell me a little bit more about your life around that time and about why and how you were able to qualify for a flat here? What was, what was the circumstances? Oh, well, I um, had my daughter at 18. Uh, and uh, I managed to get, I managed to get a flat down um, East London where I was from, and then I think there were flats for so long you could keep them until they put you on the next level of flats. So this was by the Rotherive Tunnel, just the back of it, flats there, and then uh, when I got a move, I moved to Clapton, you know, uh, E5, isn't it? by Springfield Park and Hackney and all around there. So I think I was there for five years. We had like, I had a bath in the kitchen. Like, oh, I have a bath in the kitchen, like. And somehow I managed to get a move out of How, I don't know if they were gonna knock that block down or what. So this was, they said, where do you want to move to? And I didn't know anywhere, so I just said, oh, um, uh, Richmond, not that I knew it, Paddington and somewhere else, and then this offer come up. So, wow, I didn't want to see no other offers. So, yeah, this was it, yeah, so. And it's really been great. I didn't even know Port Bella was around the next corner for about six months. <laughs> I just thought went to this road, was it, yeah. But yeah, schools are straight there. Got my daughter in school straight away, and, uh, Yep, everything was great. Everything was just great. Yeah. So tell me about then what happened, what happened next, because I'm, I'm in a lot of areas, but my understanding is that Trevor went through some difficult years um, where there was a problem with that social behaviour, maybe before the concierge on the door. Yeah, so yeah. So, the could you, so could you talk me through, just take me back to that point just then when you said everything was, everything was great. Right, yeah. Um, I just think lots of, um, because there was no one on the door, you know, everyone used to come in and out, do drugs on the stairs, a lot of places were robbed upstairs, uh, someone threw a, a um, safe over the balcony because they couldn't open it and it hit off my, my balcony, I heard boing when I'm lying there on the sofa, I thought God if it had gone in it would have killed me. And uh, yeah, there's quite a lot of crime. Yeah. So could you just, um, because we'll probably, we'll, we'll I think use this part as well um, in the film. I just need a connecting thought between those two, because you said 
just you come, you come here and it's, it's gorgeous and we all want to live there. Mm -hmm. um, could you just connect those two thoughts with something in your own words that says um, that then things started to get difficult? We'll talk about the present. Yeah. Moment, yeah. Just something, yeah. just a little sentence there. From, from, from being really, really nice, it just started going downhill. People were just coming in and out. They never lived there, bashing on doors, using it just to come in and kip. Uh, lots of things that they shouldn't be doing, you know, knocking on the door, see if anyone's in. No, right, well, bash that door in and get stuff out of there. Like sleeping on the stairs, the back stairs, jacking up on the back stairs. And... Um, there was a terrible incident, I shouldn't go into it, but something happened to a young girl in one of the lifts when she was taking the rubbish. So I don't really need to go any further with that. Yeah, and I know that family moved out. And uh, it just it was really bad. You didn't know who you was getting in the lift with or who was coming out to follow you. So it was, um, I think we had to get something done about that. So what happened then next to, to put it out of the... Well, um, well yeah, the I wasn't involved in any, any of the meetings or anything because I was, like, still young. I didn't want to be at meetings, old people, things. So um, I think people that were in charge must have sat down and got, got it sorted maybe in the club room. We did have one woman and man who did start off being in, in the uh, the tenants association. She used to come round once a year for a pound. I don't know where she put it. <laughs> He'd have his big fag, the husband beside her. Like it cost about two quid for a fag and then cigars. But um, yeah, so so um, I think they gathered bits up and then they used to put a a porter on the door in the, in the little shed, you know, like that side you go in, it's the pipe room. A porter just stood there for a few years until they decided to make a proper reception area. And uh, I think, and all the people that were working on it lived in the block. So that made it so much easier because they knew who lived here and who didn't. So that really made it easy. And I, oh, so-and-so is looking for you. And then one day, my friend phoned me. She was on reception. She went, so I went, what? She says, oh, no, I can't tell you this bit, sorry. But anyway, <laughs> I've just fell in. <laughs> oh, no, another thing. She said, so quit the TV licence people are on their way up. Don't be in. <laughs> this was another thing. But, um, yeah, yeah, it was... Um, it was like it was like that, like and uh, but yeah, it was really good. So did um, so after the well, after the porter and then after the reception and concierge, yeah. what what did life change? Did it get better? Uh, yeah, it got better because um, you felt safer leaving your property. So you know that was you felt relieved when you went out that your house would still be there, not not touched or anything. And uh, because they knew you, they could like give you messages. Oh, your friend come up today. I told her you weren't in. Like, it was more like family. So um, yeah, I did like it when the proper people that lived in the block, I wish they still lived in the block that worked there. But we've got all outsiders now, you know, so. I'll come to that. Um, just on that last question, just because I want to cut my question out. Yeah. Could you give me a full sentence? Life got so much better. Um, we, you could go out knowing that you know, your place wasn't going to be turned over. Um, friends would, if they come to Trellick, they would know, the reception would know where you were and say, no, they're not in, they're being later, pass messages on. 
Um, we got doors fixed on the balconies themselves. So we had intercom doors put on our separate balcony as well as down the front. So it was double secure. And it was so much nicer. I think everyone moved on. The crime seemed to drop. And um, it was better for all of us. Yeah, much better. You see more happy faces in the lifts. Yeah, it was better. Yeah. So now then, still seems to be a thriving yeah. community. How would you describe it working now? Oh, it seems to work all right. I mean, we've got, I don't know how many different um, people live in the block, ethnic people. Could be as much as about, say, 40, 50 different types of people. We just all seem to get on. We either don't talk or you talk. And uh, you just all get in the lift. You don't have to speak because you just press a button. But some, some people do, some people, you know, it all depends. But the lifts are good, there's three of them, so you can always... One's always out at the weekends for some reason. But yeah, it's... Um, and you can get a lot of us in the lift, about 20 of us before you shut the door. Quick, let's get that lift, quick, push one more, can get in there, quick, we've got to wait two minutes for another one, get in that one. But yeah, so much better, yeah. And um, we all get on in our own ways. So you don't have to speak anyone else's language, you just do nod. Oh, 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 yeah, okay. Yeah, but th th so many people come and go here. It's like the other day I was chatting to a girl on my floor and she had two kids. And I said, Do you live up here? She said, Yeah. I said, Oh. She says, I said, How long have you been here? She went six years <laughs> on my floor. But because she was past me, she's down that end, I thought, Oh, okay then. But yeah, people do move in and out just as quick. My neighbour moved out and she'd been there the same as me, but we never spoke. She was one of them women that never spoke to her and I didn't even know she'd moved. Yeah, so that's 43 years. Next door neighbour doesn't speak to you. But a lot of people do come and go, you know. I had a friend, um, when he come to visit me here years ago, he said, I must get your flat in here. And I lost contact with him, and then one day I was doing a computer course. Uh, he was my teacher, and I still didn't know it was him. And we were walking home here one day, and I says, oh, I'm going up. He says, I live up there. And I went, what? And I went, I looked at him, and I went, what's your name? And he said, Lee. And I went, oh, my God, I know you, don't I? And he went, oh, yeah. So that's how we met up again. Yeah, just completely forgot him. Yeah, so he is up here, so he did actually get what he wanted, so he managed it. But yeah, a lot of people do. Um, just two very quick last questions. One, I guess the first one is, is about the space out here, um, about the graffiti wall. And yeah. What, what does that space kind of mean to the people here? What does it mean to you? Um, I think it's a great space for the graffiti because it's not harming anyone. It's out the way. If you want to look at it, look out the window and you can see it. And uh, they're not rowdy or nothing. It, it's quite a good place. Yeah. What do you think it means to the young people as well, especially to kids? Yeah, well, they've got the little football next door, haven't they? Yeah, so they can go on from football to graffiti if they like. But before we used to have an upper floor with a little park in it and uh, the walkways connected over the football pitch so there was a little park there with a little kids slide, grass and, and a little seating area that was quite nice. Yeah. Oh I don't know now because I don't know how far they're building the new places, how far up. I've seen the plans, but it still doesn't actually show you. And I think they're saying that we can't enjoy the park that they're going to put there now. Even though it's our, it was our, it's our space, but the new people in their little buildings will enjoy some park life at the front. But, um, I don't think we'll take no notice of that. If we want to go park, we'll go park. <laughs> Um, it's taking so long. I think they've been talking about this about six, seven years. 
So nothing gets done instantly around here. But we could still be talking about this place in five years now. I don't know if it'd be done by then. But uh, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? Mm, yeah. Last question. Yeah. So you can speak about it in a very general sense. What does it mean to you? Say so that again, I don't know. Say so that again, I didn't get that. Well, what does, what does this estate mean to you if you were describing it to someone? Oh, yeah, it's great because you've got everything here. Everything's on your doorstep. You couldn't actually move to a better central place. Everything you want is here. The doctors, the laundry, the pharmacist, you've got it all. Glasses shop, library, these coffee shops along here. You, you don't have to move once you're outside Trellick. It's just this road and it's, it's just made. And then you've got the famous market just further down. New village being opened up around the corner. It's just like, you know, when, when I come home and I first see the building every night, you go, oh, yeah, that's, that's me, that's where I live. Because you, you often see people looking up, you know, or taking photos, and you think, yep, yeah, I live in there, yep, yeah, that's me. Mm, yeah. How close do you think, then, that is to Goldfinger's original vision? Do you think he'd be happy with I think he would be, yeah. He would have been very happy, I reckon. I think. Did you say that just because um, we'll cut my question out. So if you say yeah. that as a sentence oh, okay. with Goldfinger's name. Yeah, yeah. I, th yeah, I think Goldfinger would be very proud. He would really to see it. He'd be turning in his grave otherwise. It, but yeah, he'd love it. Yeah. Because I don't know what the other building's doing. I think that was sold off and it's all private now. Balcon. Yeah. It's got a certainly bigger percentage of private clinics than. Yeah, I mean, I know there's a few people in here that own their places, but I don't know how. Yeah, it must be, yeah. Yeah. That's okay.